part of our virtual colonial day, I'm going to be making cookies known as Joe Froggers. Joe Froggers were named after a Marblehead resident named Joseph Brown. Joseph Brown had an African American father and a Wampanoag Indian mother. And it was believed that he was freed as a slave because he served in the Revolutionary War as a member of Glover's Marblehead Regiment. So I have included the recipe and also I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on how they were made back in the uh, 18th century and also how you can make some today. They're very delicious. Um, and one thing that they used uh, to take them on board ships and they had a really long shelf life. They were kind of like ginger snaps. Uh, there's no milk and no egg in the recipe. So they were pretty hardy and could be kept for a long time. Uh, it was said that they kept them in big barrels on board ships for their long sea voyages. Uh, and, but you'll find they're just as delicious today. So I've made my cookie dough ahead of time and placed it in the refrigerator, uh, which is something they would not have had. So they probably would have used dough that was maybe a little bit warmer. Um, I've made one cookie, which is about the size, I've cut it about, about the size that they would have been made when they would have made them to take up on board ships. Uh, they said they were as big as a saucer, which is probably about the size of maybe um, a little bit bigger than a, a small paper plate. Pretty good size, and you'll see that after it's cooked. Um, I'm using a cookie sheet and, of course, my oven to bake it, but they would have cooked it either on an open fire surrounded by coals using a very heavy cast iron skillet like this one. Very heavy, very strong. It could be put over an open flame. Uh, they also may have used um, an outdoor oven and I've included a couple of videos on how those were built and used to bake um, things like cookies or bread. You can take a look at those videos too. But I'm using a cookie sheet and I'm using uh, parchment paper, which they would not have had. And hopefully I can get this cookie onto the cookie sheet. It's very sticky dough. There we go. That's those are the extra pieces we're not going to use. We're going to try to get this nice and flat and around. You can see how big it is. It's a giant cookie. And we're going to put it onto our parchment. And we're going to pop it in the oven. And I will let you see it when it's cooked. So while we're waiting for our big round Joe Frogger cookie to bake in the oven, I'm going to show you how to make the smaller cookies. Okay, so um, I've already rolled a few out onto my cookie sheet. So they're about maybe one, one and a half inches around. So if you just take a spoon, take it between your palms, roll it up, and then roll it in some sugar, white sugar, or you can use brown sugar. And then you're gonna take, I'm um, using my redware bowl that was made in Sturbridge Village. So this was something that the people of the 18th century would have used, they would have made their own pottery. So I'm not going to use it to put food in, but I'm going to use the bottom to, if you can see, to flatten the cookie out. And that'll make it into about a two inch cookie, which is a little more manageable to eat and a little better, probably healthier than eating a nine inch cookie. And again, these cookies have no egg, no milk in them. So you don't have to store them in the fridge. Um, you can leave them out. They don't even probably need to be in a container. They'll be nice and, and crunchy and chewy. You can have it with a nice glass of milk or a colonial men or women would have had it with some tea. So it'll soften right up if you have it with any type of a beverage. So we'll be back when these are out of the oven. I'm sure many of you have heard about the town of Marblehead. Marblehead is located about 17 miles north of Boston on the Atlantic Ocean. And it's a, a lovely little town to visit, especially during this time. There's lots of fresh air places to walk around. Um, Marblehead has more historic homes in their actual places where they were built than any other town in the country. So if you go there, it's like being transported back to the 18th century. 
Marblehead had some famous residents and uh, they are buried in Old Burial Hill in Marblehead. Among them are Joseph Brown, who we just talked about, uh, the Joe Frogger cookie, um, and also General John Glover, who was probably second or third under George Washington, but many of us haven't heard about him. He was kind of an unsung hero in the Revolutionary War. Um, many of you may have seen this, this picture of George Washington crossing the Delaware. Uh, one of the most important battles of the Revolutionary War. Well, the gentlemen that are with him are the sailors from Marblehead, led by Colonel John Glover. And this painting, the original painting, is hanging in the New York Museum of Art. Uh, but there's something that you may not know about this painting. A lot of people don't know about this painting. I'm gonna show you in a minute what's incorrect in this painting. So in a couple of um, days, I'm gonna be taking you on a virtual tour of Prospect Hill, which is located in Somerville. Uh, at the time, it was known as part of Charlestown. And it was a very high hill that we're gonna visit soon. But on that hill, this flag was raised. You can take a look. And if you go visit up there, that flag is still flying. This was the first American flag commissioned during the Revolutionary War. It's called the Grand Union flag. And if you look at it in the top, you will see the Union Jack, which was the English flag. And remember, when the Revolutionary War started, the people who lived in Massachusetts were British citizens. We were still part of England. We were under the rule of the king. So this flag was commissioned not to say we were gonna be our own country, but that we were independent, we wanted independence. And you'll see the 13 stripes representing the colonies, but we were still under British rule. And we were okay with that. We were just uh, concerned because we weren't being treated fairly. Now here's the thing, this, oh, this flag uh, flew from 1775 to 1777. Now many of you will recognize this flag, the flag with the circle of 13 stars. This flag was not flown until 1777. So the Revolutionary War had already started, but many people associate this as the first American flag and people believe that it was sewn by Betsy Ross. So well, that may just be folklore. The first flag was the Grand Union flag. And this picture on this memorial can from the bicentennial is one of the few times that you will actually see George Washington crossing the Delaware with the correct flag, which is the Grand Union flag. So now do you know the mistake in the big painting, that famous painting? The flag in this painting is incorrect. George Washington and the men from Marblehead saved the Revolutionary War, but not under this flag. So our giant Joe Frogger has been cooked in the oven. And after it's cooled, you can tell, it's nice and hard and crispy. And these are what would have been carried in barrels on board ships. So the sailors would have had a nice, pretty good sized treat to eat while they were out on the open seas. I've also made a, small, a batch of smaller Froggers, which is probably what you could make, or you could just make a few big ones and have one for each member of your family. You can hear, they're all cooked crispy with sugar and they're very, very hard. Almost like I said, a ginger snap or a ginger cookie. So if you don't get to make them now during this time, and I know um, some of the ingredients may be a little challenging to get right now at your grocery store, but uh, you can always make them later on and make them um, a part of your regular cookie recipes that you make for holidays or uh, during the summertime. They're always a special and yummy treat.